Retro Games Room, the series. Coming up in this video, we're going to have some gameplay comparisons. It's going to be amazing. What's up guys and welcome to another Gaz Loves Games video special. So here today, I'm talking about my beloved retro games. So you guys know I've been playing retro video games kind of since the 90s. I've still got all my old original consoles, which you've seen in prior videos, but I'm always considering what is next for those consoles? How can I make them look better for my current gaming setup? Because I tend to play on an HD TV, it's better for space. I then know that once I'm able to play them on that HD TV, I don't have to worry about old CRT TVs breaking down. I just kind of don't have that worry and I'm always kind of pursuing to try to get the best digital image because then I can catch a card and use that for my videos and all that good stuff. So what I wanted to really talk about today is to kind of dig into what is a good way to play these retro games in 2021? And there's a lot of different ways that we can do that. We get those of us that want to just plug and play and actually we don't really care about how sharp or cutting HD edge the games are, what frames or lag is running at. Sometimes people just want to plug in the game, get a game on that and just relive those epic retro gaming memories from the 90s. So this really got me thinking about what my actual preference is. I, I, do I play in a different number of ways? What do I steer more towards? So there's a number of different ways that people can play and capture gameplay now in 2021. I found this topic really interesting because I guess for me, I play in a number of different ways. I do just take my composite cables a lot of the time, plug those in through my SCART, through a converter and I get that to output through HD signal so I can play it on my TV and so I can capture. But then as you can see in some of this gameplay, it's not the most cutting edge graphics you're ever gonna see. It's kind of a little bit smoothed off, you'll get the odd jagginess, you'll get some color blurring and bleeding and the picture just doesn't look as sharp and as awesome as it would do on a CRTV television. So with a number of other options available in today's age, there's a lot of more complex upscalers that you can purchase. However, you're gonna have a lot of expense with this. You're gonna need certain cables, you're gonna need other hardware, physical upscalers. I'm gonna cover that more in a future video. So I'm gonna focus more now on what I actually do. So I'm either putting that really basic original CRT composite signal through HD to be able to play that on my TV. Now I do sync that up to my Elgato to game capture. That is a bit of a plus because I'm able to tweak some of the settings and the gameplay that I've got on here at the moment is what I was playing just yesterday. And I tweaked the settings slightly to kind of just take down the ferocity of the colors, adjust the brightness a little bit. And for me, I, I was actually really quite happy with the results. I wasn't expecting it to look that great because quite often I find playing some of these retro games can give you an eye strain or a headache. And I'm a sufferer of motion sickness. And some of these retro games, if they're not played in the right way, it can really, really trigger that off and it could be quite a horrendous experience. So I'm gonna cover that more in a future video. I've got quite a lot I could talk about to, to do with that. But also, different ways of playing would then be sort of more of the HD options. Now you guys know I'm a physical guy, I like my physical collection, I'm all about the physical parts to plug and play. But there's other ways that can sometimes be more economical on the wallet rather than spending all on the technical gear. You can buy a number of other different things like the mini consoles are a really good way to roll. I've got my, my Sega Mini here, I'm just trying not to take Amy Rose out in the process. But you know, I've got, I've got a lot of these mini consoles. I've got the Sega, I've got the Super Nintendo, I've got the Nintendo. They're great little pieces. I actually just really like them. It's a really cool display piece, especially with the, the Mega Drive 1 where you've got a working cartridge slot, even though like, I haven't got any cartridges that big to put in. I think you can get some. But let's check out some gameplay for that. So you can plug that straight in HD out, that is straight plug into your HDMI and you're good to go on an HD TV. Now it looks a lot sharper 
undoubtedly. You've got cleaner edges, you've got sharper pixels, and a lot of people love that look. I tend to find people either seem to, from what I hear and see, they seem to love that really sharp look, or they'll like other consoles and other ways where you can apply the scan lines and make that look a lot more retro. Some of the minis I think can do that, but there's a number of other ways of playing them as well, and you can literally just buy a, your PC, uh, legally obtain ROMs to play for games that you already physically own, and that works quite well for having a real sharp HD defined game to play and it works really well for capturing as well if you've got the hardware to do so. This really got me thinking yesterday on what my preference is because obviously I'm a physical car guy, I need to use some upscaling gear, I haven't actually got really good expensive kit. Um, so that's probably why some of my retro footage doesn't actually look that sharp. Um, so I wanted to compare some of that and we're going to look at some of that side by side with some of my HD capture. So I played this with my original Mega Drive and then I actually played it via the Mega Drive Classics Collection for the PS4. So I wanted to compare those side by side and see do I like the really rough original image or do I like a cleaner pixel. So that's another, another number of ways that you can do it as well is there's the Mega Drive Collection which you can put into your PlayStation and they've released numerous copies of these. It's another way of playing a, a, a small selection of the games in HD. Obviously you can't access all of the games and some of the best games I must add. So for me personally, I tend to stay away from scan lines because I do like a clear image. So it's more whether I prefer the softer composite original SD version or whether I prefer like a really high end, sharp, crispy HD. So I've thought about this for a while and I kind of I kind of surprised myself in a way because I'm always kind of trying to upscale to get a better or what I think is a better sharper picture. But then having actually compared these two, it quite surprised me that I found the really hard sharp pixel version not as pleasing on my eye as the original kind of softer image. I think I think I prefer the the edge is softened or blurred slightly. Maybe it's just kind of what I'm used to, but for me, I, I actually prefer this. Cut, 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 cut. Okay, now, looking at this on the screen now, the HD looks absolutely amazing with the screen capture, but this is not how it looked to me at the time on the TV. So here the HD looks lovely and sharp, the colours look vivid and bright. Seeing that next to the SD version, the SD version looks absolutely horrific. So I had my thoughts at the time, but um, I've completely changed my mind on seeing this. And I can see in the SD version how much of the detail on colour is lacking and the, the graphics is, is just not quite as sharp either. Um, so with the HD version being overly square, and maybe a little bit too pixelated on the TV. If I can find the right solution in between HD and SD, I think I will have the perfect picture for my screen, which will probably look amazing in my capture card also. So I've got some work to do, guys. So it's something that I'm gonna to need to explore further. Can I make that image better? Now I've got a number of upcoming purchases which I'm going to bring it to the channel in some future episodes. So I'm going to get some better cables and hopefully try to test that out with some new hardware because if I'm going for better cables I'll then end up going through component over composite and my current really cheap little scalar doesn't have component input so I'm going to need something more than that to test. Can I get uh, something in the middle is going to be better than the original rough SD picture, but it might not be quite as sharp as the HD, which I'm kind of not such a fan of anyway. So I think if I can take my original smoothed out option, make that a little bit clearer, and then there's other settings that you can get as well to apply maybe a little bit more softening if it, crisp, if it like crispens it up too much. Um, it should be interesting, so it's something I'm going to explore. Let me know down in the comments if it's something that interests you guys. 
Um, I know a lot of people have got a lot of different methods. There's a lot of different ways to play some of these classic games in the current era. Let me know some of your preferred ways, some of your solutions. How do you prefer the game? Do you kind of do it for budget, for expense, to keep it cheap and accessible? Or do you actually like to spend a bit more to get the game really nostalgic, but also looking how you want that to look? Let me know guys, I look forward to hearing from you. If you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button, turn that bell on and you can stay connected for future Gaz Loves Games episodes. I hope you've enjoyed that today. It's a topic that I've enjoyed, but I'm now needing to go away and do a lot more research into now I've started thinking about it. Anyway guys, I hope you've enjoyed this and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Yes mate.